Wait, you're recording this? Yes. Oh, we are, itchy, we, are, itchy we are well, I was gonna say we are live. We are not live, but we are re <laughs> we are recording. We're about uh, as close as we can get. <laughs> we are this is this is a um this is a hybrid uh lineup. We have we have uh we have members from each of my uh Steelers teams on. Yep. Um the best members. Sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, I was, yes, members. Let, let's acknowledge that. The I was just going to say, you know, too the bad Allison's not here. The you know, we, 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 we miss yes. you, Allison, but now we're saying, now screw those right. other people. They, they, well, we do miss her. I'm tugging my ear because I miss Allison. Yeah, well, I, I can't tug on my ear. But, okay, well, so it's been, well, I mean, we haven't even talked since the um, since the draft. I know. Uh, what What do we think about the draft in general? What, do you, what, what, did, you, what did you think? I like it. I thought it was a winner. I'm a little nervous that PFF rated us so high. That makes me scared. Something oh God. is something. That's Did you scary. See that? They gave us like an A, which is really scary. But I thought it was good. I thought I think I thought we did really well. Better than I expected. What do you think? I, I feel the same way I feel after every Steelers draft. They did the draft. Like they did the thing. Like that's about all you can expect from the Steelers. Like it's too early to evaluate any of these players. We could have like the steel of the, the steel of the draft on our hands and not even know it. So uh, am I super excited about Kenny Pickett? No. Do I like the Georgia wide receiver? Yes. Um, but like outside of that, like there, there, there's really like, it's too early to evaluate it. So am I happy with the draft? Yes, because it's the Steelers and it's Kevin Colbert and he knows what he's doing. Uh, I'm sad to see him go, but uh, yeah. Other than that, I, I don't have strong reactions one way or the other. What were your thoughts as the draft was going on that Thursday night when no quarterbacks were taken and it's, you know, pick after pick after pick. And then it finally gets to around the Steelers pick. Were you thinking, yay, we're going to take a quarterback. Yay, it's going to be Malik Willis, or let's get someone else. What, what, what did you guys think? I kind of, I, I was shocked that a quarterback lasted that long. We had talked about this when we had talked before, and I thought for sure, just with so few quarterbacks of any decent caliber in this draft, I thought for sure somebody would panic and pull the trigger and draft one earlier than us. And, uh, I wasn't real keen on drafting a quarterback, but I felt like if we had to draft one, it would be Kenny Pickett. And so I was, I was, oh, I was good with that choice. I feel like half of Pittsburgh would have rioted if he'd been sitting there and we hadn't chosen him <laughs> and it just wasn't worth it. Just not worth it listening to people. I'd rather have him on the team, but I'm excited. I think he's good. I think it's a good addition. Do you know what I mean? I think it's, it's fine. I think he's excited to be there. And I think a passion and excitement counts for something and desire. Yeah. I was surprised he made it. What were, what were your thoughts in dirt, like right before the Steelers pick, Andrew? Uh, so I, I didn't want them to take a quarterback at it, it, in the first round at all. I was hoping they would go D line, go DBE, like safety, something like that. Um, and but when they got down to it and they took Pickett, I was surprised because like everything I had read had them going Malik, 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 and. So I was a little surprised by that pick. I'm not disappointed in it. I think he's a talented kid and he could probably do some stuff. But am I thrilled with it? No. I mean, he's probably going to come in and I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of an NFL equivalent to him. But I, I the, can't really The think equivalents of I've heard is either Derek Carr or Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, sound, yeah, and the redheaded sound. guy what's his name damn it the redheaded guy andy dalton there you go dalton that's oh, why I please, no 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 please right? don't, please don't put him in andy dalton that's why andy I dalton. His mind out his his name out of my mind <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean i i i i kind of agree you know kenny pickett is not the you know he's not the next he's not trevor lawrence or Joey Burrow or you know the next he's not gonna light the world like on that. fire like but, he's just not you know what his most of his most valuable trade is he's cheap we've got cheap labor at the quarterback position yeah 
And I love that. That that gives them flexibility. That saves them like $30, $40 million for the next five years. You've also got some real competition now at the quarterback position, which I think is really valuable. Do you know what I mean? It was Mitch Trubisky's job to do whatever he wanted with, however he wanted to do it. And, and I think this lights a little bit of a fire under people's asses to go in and do something in training camp. And I am all for competition. Well, whatever yeah. it takes. Do you know what I mean? Show up and give us your best. Whatever that is, win the spot. Yeah, can I, uh, Joe? Who was the who was the quarterback they took like last in like the seventh round? There was some kid out of like South Dakota State or something like that. Yeah. His name is I gotta scroll a long way. Uh, Chris Alodikin from South yeah. Dakota right. State. He, get, he gets. To, I'm hoping my my hope and pray is that he gets to occupy Mason Rudolph's spot on the bench for the re, for the upcoming season because Mason Rudolph does not deserve to be on this team anymore. You know what I really hope with that kid? That kid's a running quarterback. So I think it'll be interesting to see what we do with him because we, you know, teams have converted running quarterbacks like that into something else before. But I'm wondering if that isn't a little bit of like a practice squad move. You have that guy on the practice squad. We use him when we, you know, get ready to play Lamar Jackson or like some of those more mobile quarterbacks to put him in. Well, now we got to use him to play the Browns too. Now we got to use him to play the Browns too. He definitely has that talent. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. I think that's exactly what they were trying to do with him is basically you need a fourth arm. You need a camp arm. And also you need a practice squad player to be the scout team quarterback for like, yeah. Yeah. um, You know, you're, you're Lamar Jackson, the the week we play the Ravens, you're Deshaun Watson, the week we play the Browns, stuff like that. So, and that's his skill set, you know, and, and the, the, the Steelers fan base is just, it just, it just cracks me up like this was a wasted pick it's a seventh round people everything is a waste <laughs> it's just a frivolous pick sometimes you get something great sometimes you get crap it's like a happy meal toy who knows it, it's okay there's, it's okay i think it's a great pick i thought it was genius there, there's a reason that it, there's a reason that the last pick in the draft is called mr irrelevant like right that like that it, like you you can't expect your team to like strike diamonds every time like they take a shot and if it pans out it pans out if it doesn't it doesn't you move on you you yeah. draft next year there's a That's lot of things none of those people are drafting anybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah the reason I, you're all sitting at home <laughs> it's just okay. it's just it's comical it's comical it's yeah. it is. um um yeah the, the first thing i thought when they when they got picket is okay cool but why did they even bother with Trubisky? I, and, you know, I wasn't happy about that. It was like, well, first of all, Trubisky's cheap. And second of all, like you said, Leanne, competition's good. 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 You have, you, you have two and a half options of, of, of the starting right. quarterback now. So, right. yeah, we don't know. Trubisky could be a bust. And then, you know, be. people are saying, well. I mean, he has been a bust. Yeah, I mean, pick it. He's also been it. in a really crappy situation, so I don't even feel like he can be, like, fully evaluated really well. And he had, like, no wide receivers, no coaches. Well, Val, and I have a, I have a friend that's a diehard Bears fan, and he he curses Matt Nagy's name. So Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I still believe in Trubisky, and I think he is going mm-hmm. to be successful, which would be really funny. It, let, let, let's say he has like an awesome year then I then so. i'm not saying that's a, it's a waste but basically that's a that's a best case scenario if if, Mitch, case. if trubisky plays so well that it keeps picking on the bench that's a win-win for the steelers it's like that's my dream situation that's yeah. the dream situation that's that's a great yeah. situation you know because we have I, trubisky on a great contract like that contract is all ex- incentives and like way off amazing incentives do you know what i mean like right. playoff birth and right. stuff and for him to get any kind of money in the next year he's like eight million dollars i mean come on the worst case scenario if he doesn't do well you trade him to some other team anybody will be glad to pick him up for their eight million dollar contract and you get something to return and you move on with your life do you know what i mean there's to me there's nothing yeah. lost by taking in him and keeping him plus oh, everybody yeah. seems to forget as they complain that we lost a quarterback we literally had a quarterback tragically pass away and and so that has you know sad but it's true it has to be that position had to be filled as well yeah 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 um and condolences to Dwayne Haskin and his family yeah it's tragic uh um, yeah that that, that 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 that's a terrible situation I I agree with you I I think that 
it's a, it's a win win. If Pickett comes out and is just the best guy off the board, like like or, or in the room, play him. If yep. Mitch Trubisky happens to outplay him a little bit, and then maybe Kenny takes it over in the middle of the season, cool. That's fine. If Mitch is just the best guy, I'm also cool with that. The only thing I want is to get Mason Rudolph out of that quarterback room. No, yeah. if, if he's okay being the third string quarterback, then I will go with it. I don't think he is, though. I would rather have whatever the guy we drafted as, as the third string quarterback outside of Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph needs to go. I do he's not, not like Mason bad. Rudolph. He is. <laughs> Mason Rudolph is a perfectly adequate third string quarterback that yeah. that would would play you know if there is some some accident that happened with you know if 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 um if mitch and kenny are you know driving right. the permanis and, and they get into a wreck or something like that it's like the and, president and the vice president you can never have them in the same place at the same time with the speaker of the <laughs> house up there yeah. mason no, rudolph is the speaker of the house yes no <laughs> yes. no we don't want him He's he's the designated survivor. That's what right. that's what Mason yeah, Rudolph is. Put like is. Tomlin out there before I put Mason Rudolph out <laughs> right, there. Right. <laughs> hey, Mason's not that bad. I mean, yeah, he can't even I beat Detroit, but still. Uh, you know what? So does so does the Steelers front office. So yeah. they kept uh, him on the team. I'm for sure. now, I mean that you need four arms. Yeah. So um and, and hey, yeah. who know, who knows how this is gonna work? This is going to be a fascinating training camp and a fascinating it really preseason. Is. It you know, it's going to matter, like everything is going to matter. This isn't just you know, oh, we, we know the start starters Ben and you know, whatever. It's like, no, we don't know who the starter is gonna be. We don't know how this right. is all gonna work out. This is all on paper right now, so it's it's exciting. Yeah, I've never I had agree. anything against Mason Rudolph. I just always want the best man to have the job. Do you know what I mean? Whatever that job is, whoever the best person available is for it. And I think at times he's had positions that he hasn't necessarily been in the best equipped person to have that position. And, and, and then I find it frustrating that we just keep repeating that same cycle over and over again. So it's not, for me, it's not personal. I just, I just want the best man for the job. If somebody gets hurt, I know you're not going to have somebody equivalent, you know, as your second or third string quarterback, but it shouldn't be like such a huge, like can't even pass the ball off kind of stuff. I mean, it's ridiculous. Let's just go back two years or how many years of that was the yeah, year that Ben got did. hurt and you had yes. Mason and you had to play Duck Hodges. Duck Hodges. Right. Who, while he was okay, still that was a disaster when you're playing that dude. That dude, that Chris Alodican is basically the, the Duck Hodges of this. So, you know, if, if you're down to, to that dude, you're in big trouble. So I'm, I'm, I'm I would I'm like happy. to see, I would like to see him win the job for Mason. Like, honestly, I would. Like win here's the third string job for Mason. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. Um, let's say the the Steelers' goal is to have this Chris Alada can be um, like the the practice squad guy and the, and the scout team guy. That would mean that they would have to cut him and put him on the practice squad. And and right. if they cut him, that leaves him open into every other team so let's say he has like an awesome preseason and is playing lights out that some other team is going to pick him up so like you might you, right. you, you kind of have to hide him yeah a little bit be careful what you do with him uh yeah. okay I, I i ran a poll and uh to say who who will have the most snaps this season mitch trubisky came in with, with 53 percent kenny pickett 43 oh. percent and and bless your heart that the people that said mason rudolph 3.7 percent. so those are just um, jokers that, that yeah. those steeler haters those are browns fans that answered your poll <laughs> <laughs> um, open. so so yeah i and, and i think that's i don't know i mean the most likely scenario is Mitch starts the season, and he, he, at some point, Kenny Kenny Pickett comes in and, yeah. and plays the rest of the season. So it's all going to depend on the camp. Like it's literally all going to depend on the camp. I mean, if Pickett comes in and is the clear like better, then like I don't I I don't hesitate for a minute to think that the Steelers are going to just start him. Like, but it could be like remember Ben's rookie year where he came in as the backup and Tommy Maddox got hurt and then right there you go his, his, history took it from there so yeah i mean yeah. So, it is what it is and, and you I know told this story last time we talked i was at that game when like we booed tommy off the field and ben came out and played and 
And uh, I turned and looked to the guy sitting next to me and I was like, this is like history. We're watching history. You and really like, you oh, are. Wow, we're watching a sub come in. I'm like, you mark my words. I was so excited. And, yeah. and like, so they lost that game and then he went, he went, he, he won the next 15 in a row. Like but that's what the guy was yeah. drunk when oh, yeah, he was he leaving. He's like, oh yeah, there's your that. history. Like you wait and see, you mark my words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, the the big thing is everybody was talking before the draft was like, oh, Malik Willis, Malik Willis. You got to get Malik Willis. Where Malik did he Willis, end up going, by the way? Because I didn't he went into th- anybody except for the Steelers. He went in the third round to the Tennessee. Yeah. The third? The third. Huh? The third round. Now, that's, that's the thing. Here's, here's the thing. Obviously, other teams were not a big fan of his, even though he was considered the, the quarterback with the most upside. And to that, I say, good. I'm glad we got the guy that actually has the skills and has the experience yeah. as opposed to the, the potential that didn't have a lot of experience that didn't play against um, yeah. real good competition. So I have to ask, are you really glad about it? Are you really glad that they didn't pull a Dan Marino and not draft the best quarterback in the draft from the university of Pitt? Like they did, like they did when they didn't. I'm a diehard Pitt fan, but I mean, really Kenny Pickett is, is in no way (laughs) near Dan Marino. Dan Marino Marino had like one of the greatest. That was like a clear, that was a clear blunder at the time it happened. I mean, I remember hearing my dad talk about like being mind blown by that. I yeah. still would like to. I know don't the follow real. college football for any anybody that's no, watching this or I, hearing I, this. Like I still would like to thing. know what the what the real reason why is they took Marino. I mean, you hear you know there was the rumors of like, oh well, he's on drugs or something like that, or yeah. who, who knows? Maybe it was a situation where maybe he would not have um, succeeded in Pittsburgh because it was his hometown. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe he needed to go somewhere else. Story. You know, there's some, obviously more to the stories than we ever hear. But then, you know, somebody said to me after after the draft was all over and we took Pickett, they were like, why were people so convinced that we were taking Malik Willis like over a chicken wing story? They were like, really? Like that was what got you all riled up? And I was like, stop, you make us sound simple. But then I was like, wait a minute, that sort of has some truth to it. Like, that's what got people all riled up, like this stupid chicken wing story. And then everybody was saying that we were going to take him and and then you know then oh back because he said why because reports. yes he because he said chicken wings there's eight chicken wings with tomlin or something and so then i went back and started looking at the reports and i was like why are they all saying like is it because they thought that that would be the one that would fall to us and kenny pickett would already be gone some of the people were saying but right. then for some of the other ones they were just saying that they you know it was this like whole conspiracy and i'm like this is absurd like why would you pass over a better quarterback to take this kid. I think, um, honestly, the, the Steelers did not think that Pickett would, would even be available to them. I didn't think so. I don't think so. You know, you I'm heard he was going to. I think he was at an A plan and a B plan. Yeah. I'm yeah, glad so they I, didn't trade up for him. Really I don't. Yeah. They and they up. almost did. They, they were thinking yeah. about it. So really uh, glad they didn't. Yeah. yeah um, this, this, this notion that. Um, somebody that's raw and inexperienced can magically become a, a great quarterback. That happened one time, Josh Allen. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, whole bunch of other guys. Look at the look at the 49ers right now. There's reports with the 49ers that Trey Lance, who is basically the same thing that they're trying to make the yeah. next Josh Allen, he is that he's not ready and they're going to have to stick with uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. G- Jimmy G, yeah. yeah, he's the, staying in the spot. He, he, not, I yeah, love I mean, it for Jimmy Garoppolo. I like him. He's I'm cute. Full for I love him it for him. He's a good like, looking he's been dude. The underdog forever. He's a looking dude. Like he is. That is a good looking dude. I was okay with him coming to Pittsburgh. Yeah. I don't mind having that hey. like, screen saver <laughs> that head in my we got, room, we, got the, we got the bargain brand, Jimmy G. We got we got Mr. Bisky instead. <laughs> That's all right. I'll we got dollar store you. Jimmy G. Yeah. Right. Wish.com. Wish.com um, <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> All right. Uh, so wait, the, the wide receiver we got in the next round was also Pickens. a it was also a pick because he's also Pickens or Pickens yeah. is is Pickens. the wide receiver out of Georgia, right? Yeah. George yeah. Pickens. Yeah. George, George Pickens. Pickens. Um, George Pickens from Georgia? Oh my god, that's too on the nose. It's too many things. That's it's too, too many that's things. Too on the nose for me, man. <laughs> it's yeah, it, I, yeah. Um uh, 
I, I, I hear things like this was the steal of the draft. This was the best wide receiver of the draft. The Steelers got a steal. Uh, I am, I am scared. Why? Um, here's what you hear about him. Um, his behavior. His yep. well, his his behavior is a little concerning. Uh, but I, I hear things like he's tough. He makes those combat catches. He'll block. He's tough. I heard the exact same things about Chase Claypool. Chase Claypool. And I'm not uh, saying Chase Claypool's a bust, but I am saying he had a good rookie year and he sucked his second year. And 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 he avoided contact. And this was supposed to be Mr. Physical Guy. Slump. So all this, sophomore yeah, sophomore slump. Slump. For all we know, maybe Chase Claypool could be awesome in, in his third year. Hopefully, hopefully. They really need him to. But I am scared. I'm scared about the attitude. I'm scared about the maturity. I hope that's fine. But you see him getting into fights with people on um, on on the field. That does not look like somebody that could that could uh, maintain his composure. That's what scares me. Yeah, so, I spent the day actually doing a bunch of research about wide receivers, the Steelers wide receiver room for an article for Jason, and uh, and read a lot about that kid. And you know, I watch a lot of college football, and so I was really familiar with them anyways because I'm not a Georgia fan and um it, it, it was really you know was a little bit concerned when we picked it but then you go back and you know st stop being an Alabama fan and just watch film and watch the kid and read the articles about him and I like that he's physical I see if it holds up he's really excited to come to Pittsburgh because he feels like Pittsburgh plays that kind of physical football where he would be welcomed you know what I mean he's excited he likes to block he likes to be a part of that so I mean if that all holds true then I think it's good I'm more concerned about how he recovers from this injury do you know what I mean if he really comes back yeah. from this injury at full strength if he does I do think he's could be like seriously the steal of the draft if he doesn't we could look foolish and I, t I tend to agree like I don't I don't watch college football I don't follow college football it's just it's too much for me. I was busy calling my brother at Delaware for a while. So I just kind of lost track of it. Um, so if, if he goes up and ca combats catches, like I've seen him do like in the like brief little highlight snippets that I've seen him do and like lays out for balls and like goes up and makes contested catches. I, I really like this pick because he looks fast, he looks big, he looks combative, and I'm cool with that. And I know all of his extracurriculars are something that's in question, and what are you going to do about that? But if there's a good place for him to really get right as far as his attitude on the field and off the field, it's Pittsburgh. Yeah, like, look at the other knuckleheads we've wrangled. Seriously. like that, And so that that's the way I take this pick. I think – I don't think Mike Tomlin and Kevin Colbert would have come together on a pick like this if they didn't have confidence that they could yeah. wrangle him in and utilize his just raw athletic ability. Like he he is he is a freak athlete. Like he could be a better version of Chase Claypool. And that's frightening because Chase Claypool is a frightening human being physically from a physical standpoint. So like we can have a incredibly scary receiving core this year if he if he pans out well so, you know, the 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 um the conventional wisdom on the Steelers is they suck at drafting cornerbacks but they are good at drafting wide receivers wide receivers uh, right. we're wide now, receiver high they're what wide receiver yeah wide, wide receiver you right here <laughs> right um but but and one thing and you know I, I I trashed his uh his character there's one thing that's on a very plus for his character you mentioned that ACL injury um he he had that he he suffered a, a, an ACL I believe in March of 2021 and he came back for the championship game he came back for the yep. playoffs. Yeah, he did. He could have easily said, screw this. I'm getting yeah. ready for my pro career. Yeah. Forget this. Can't take any chances. Exactly. Nah, Don't take any chances. He wanted to be with his, with his people on the field. Yeah. He so wanted to be there for I, his I, team. I, he wanted I to be there for his team. respect. Like that. I, 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 and I think that's, that's a huge plus in his favor for his character that he would. The other thing that, I so. read about him today, I forget who said it. Somebody was saying that, you know, 
most of these guys who are who are discipline problems, who are kind of head cases. It, 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 when you listen to them in interviews talk, they talk about about themselves. Do you know what I mean? Like I I need the ball more. I didn't get the ball. This play call was bad. This thing happened. And he said, but instead, this kid, you know, gets interviewed after these games and gives all this credit to all his team members. Do you know what I mean? He never puts the focus on himself. And they were but there's a good point, you know, that that's you know, that's a sign of some decent character. So if he's a little bit of a hothead, he gets passionate, makes some mistakes. That's something the Steelers can can work with him on. Do you know what I mean? That's something that's that's workable. It's better than like major off field, like illegal drugs right. or driving right. drunk he's or not something, you know, something bigger like that. Like... Yeah, no, thank God. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is, and, and the only reason he fell to the second round was because of that injury. The injury Otherwise yeah. he probably would have been top five or top 10 in, in definitely yeah. one of the first wide receivers taken. So yeah. really the Steelers got a potential to have a real steal there. So that is exciting. That's exciting. The upside is amazing. And that's, Oh yeah. That's through awesome. the roof. If he pans out, shoom through the roof people were saying it's like how how did it how did how did this happen how did you all let him fall to the Steelers how, yeah. did, how did this I love I love hearing stuff like that so I do too uh, um third round pick uh from Texas a and defensive lineman DeMarvin Leal yeah uh is it Leal or Leal I believe it's his his friends call him Leal okay Cool. I'm, his, I'm, I'm in curious. his inner circle. Joey knows he's in yeah, the inner we're, circle. We're, well, I was. I, I have a Hispanic American student that I work with. It's Leal, and when, when he pronounces it, so I was just curious. I mean, I just we just text each other, so I don't really talk to him. Anymore, so <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but this was this was. Um, I, 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 I hear he's more like a like a defensive end, like someone that would back up a uh, uh, Cam Hayward or a Stephon Tuitt, and not a a nose tackle, which is yeah. kind of what they needed because right now they're really relying a lot on uh, on Tyson Alualu, and that's a little scary because I really didn't get anybody for him. So, um, but I but I I do like this pick because. Tyson Alualu can be the run stopper, and then you put him in on pass downs at the nose tackle position. You don't have to change into your defense too much, and then they don't know what's coming. So I, I actually like, I actually like his versatility in that role. So, yeah, it's it's and, and you know it, this is nice uh, insurance in case Stefan Tuitt does not, uh, right, come back, make it. So that's good. And hey, that defensive line needs all the help I could get. So cool. Okay. We had a lot of needs. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of needs. Very much so. So we'll, yeah. So hopefully that all works good. Uh, fourth round, Calvin Austin, the third, a wide receiver from Memphis. Oh, I really like oh. this kid. Yeah. This is I exciting. This is exciting. exciting. This isn't your typical little guy, little fast guy thing. This <laughs> guy was actually a productive receiver at Memphis. So uh, it's going to be interesting. I, I, I can't wait to see how, how he gets used. It's going to be interesting. So I watched a little bit of like his highlights and I liked one specific thing about his highlight was he ran a screenplay and he took it for a touchdown and whatever. And the first thing he did rather than celebrate was point back to, I don't even know if it was a tight end or a lineman or another wide receiver that blocked for him was he literally pointed back and jumped up with that, with that guy that threw him, threw him. Yeah, the the, yeah. nice. block. That's, that's and awesome. I'm like, that's good people right there. You you, you do not see enough respect for the people to throw you those blocks. And I, yeah. I am I, that, that made me like him instantaneously. So regardless of what he does for this team, I like this kid. <laughs> there you go. One Andrew yeah. over four, four, three, two speed, uh, 39 inch vertical. He's only 170 pounds, but so he needs oh, some he, weight he's, on a, he's, a, he's a small guy. He's a small, small guy. Um, you know, <sighs> Yeah, I, I, I'm excited about this. I think he could be used as a receiver. He could be used as a jet sweep guy. And that's yeah. another thing we didn't talk about is some you know, potential. People, 
yeah, people are trashing Matt Canada because of last year. They did not, Matt Canada did not get to run the Matt Canada offense last year. He didn't even year. run his offense. Yeah, because well, of. Yeah, they had no O-line. They had no O-line, yeah. so. No personnel it, at all that yeah, you, into so, anything he does. So now, hopefully the line is better. Hopefully your quarterback yeah. is more mobile. So we're going to see what, what's going on. So that's exciting, you know. Now you have somebody yeah. that can run those jet sweeps and. We'll yeah. see. It's going to be exciting. I don't think criticizing any coordinator like their first season is not really fair. Do you know what I mean? You need to give people a chance to settle in. You're still kind of getting rid of the old stuff and bringing in the new stuff, and you can't unpack well, everything at once. I just think it's unfair to. You also had you also that had a trouble. veteran quarterback that has been there forever and knows what offense he wants right. to run. And it was pretty set in his ways. He knew it was going to be his last year. Exactly. Yeah. So you had that, but then you also had a brand new running back and a brand new offensive right. line. And like you had all these moving parts and like, I, I, I'm not faulting Matt can uh, it's Matt Canada, right? That's yeah. the guy we're talking about. Yeah. Um, I'm not faulting Matt Canada at all right now. This is the season he gets to prove himself. He's got his own line. He's got his running back. He's got a quarterback that he's going to train through the entirety of the uh, entirety of the off season. He has no excuse right now. So if this offense comes out as anemic, I have problems. I, I 100% agree. With I, you. I think it still yeah. can't come out, at least start out as anemic because you have so many new players and, and so many different things. So I'm uh, talking about over the course of the season. Yeah. Like if, if they start out, they have some bumps. Listen, yeah. I still have my question marks about Matt Canada, if he could be a, 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 a good coordinator in, in the National Football League. But he's definitely – he has no excuses after this year. Yeah. You know, you, know, you can't say, Agreed. well, the offensive line was bad. Or I the think you have to see some real progress this year. And I think if you don't, then it starts to validate people's concerns. Then, do you know what I mean? Then you get rid the of them. The first year with everything going on was too soon. But I do think that – I agree that there could be some bumps in the road getting started with all these new guys. But I, I think you have to see that steady, consistent progress that we thought we were going to see last year and didn't. Especially I'm going to play. I'm going to play the Jacob role right now and say you need to run Najee Harris all the time, every down, roll tide. I think <laughs> yes, that's, that's 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 what he would say. Um, that's a that's a funny thing because I think this is this is going to be a run heavy offense, and I am I, perfectly fine be. with that. That oh, so. Najee Harris is a great running back. Like he needs to be given the ball at every opportunity while yeah. we have him. Because they're going to run him into the ground, and he's going to be a shell of who he was five years from now. Yeah, <laughs> you're that, speaking I, Allison's language right say. now. You That's sound just like Allison. That's what they're going to do. Five years from now, we'll we'll be in underwater cities and stuff. Don't don't right. let's not worry about the future. Don't worry about um, that. We pushing uh, him off the boat in five years. Remember? <laughs> yeah, um, but I'm I'm excited uh, because I I think they're it's it's not just. They're not just going to run, run, run Najee. They're also right. going to have Najee be a wide receiver, be a you catch. know catch, catch. Do, who knows? Who knows what he's going to do? And not just like ball. yeah, yeah, yeah throw the ball. Sure, yeah, yeah, sure. Have he sell peanuts in the in the stands? Everything they're going to have. I'm pretty sure he can sub in for uh, Percy Harvin and just punt the ball. He could, yeah, what yeah. Go in. <laughs> he would probably love that. Um, guys. <laughs> um. In, in the sixth round, they took Connor Haywood, Hayward, uh, the fullback from Michigan yeah. State. Cam's How brother. Did they not? Yeah. How did this, they not? It's so this was good. the least, the, the least surprising pick. Everybody right. knew they were going to do this. Uh, from what I hear, it's basically one brother there is going to replace another brother because th this this means the end of Derek Watt if it works out, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. bye. By Derek Watt. I never Derek even blame Derek Watt. I mean, did we ever even put him? I still on the field like twice last year. I don't know how you even blame Derek Watt. I don't really he was even know just what he there. Derek basically, he, he was just there for special teams. Right. And I think uh, to say we had two Watt brothers. They put him. In, they put him in on some fullback. Derek Watt's more of a fullback than he is for a couple teamer. times. I hardly ever. I a couple I, times. I, that's it. Yeah, I think the younger Hayward is gonna is gonna contribute on special teams way more than. Derek Watt ever did, and we might see him in on some like gadget plays. Yeah. The, well, the the cool thing is, in theory, Connor Hayward could be a backup running back, 
a backup tight end and play special teams. So he yeah. could. He, I really could, don't want him to be a backup tight end because he's six foot nothing. <laughs> like he's my height. I don't. I want, think he's I don't got want some untapped potential. End. I think he's interesting. I think it's interesting. It's it's it's, it. it's 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 very interesting. Um, yeah. In, in theory, who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Maybe maybe it won't work out. Maybe it will. I don't know. I don't know. The Maybe the entirety of what I've been saying. Hey, we'll see. It, 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 if 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 that's if his if his single purpose is just for us to be rid of Derek Watt, then then it's it's a good pick. Works nothing you really nothing don't against like Derek, Derek Watt. Watt that much. It's just something with you and Mason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> Derek Watt Derek over Mason. Derek Watt and Mason can drive to the airport together. Right, right. Head out of town. Mason Rudolph any day of the week. <laughs> I did offer Mason Rudolph a job at my bakery if he needs to look for work next season because business has been booming a little bit. I could use some help, somebody with good hands. Do you want Mason Rudolph <laughs> working at your bakery? I don't know. You assume he has excellent. good hands. The <laughs> only way, the only way I would want Mason Rudolph working as a bakery is if he's working on the turnovers. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, ah, uh, in, in the seventh round, uh, Mark Robinson, linebacker from Ole Miss. This is uh, this looks like a purely yeah. um, special teams guy, you know. Yep. Um, and, and then yeah, they're gonna they're gonna build him up as an outside linebacker, I think. But yeah, I then, mean, yeah. And we talked about the um, QB. We talked about the QB. So uh, the QB that's gonna take Mason's job. Yay. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, I could totally see Mason saying, you know, when it's very obvious that he's going to be the, the third string quarterback, it's like, hey, can you trade me? Because I don't I don't I don't want to be I don't want to be here from the third. Please. All, over, all over the NFL teams are going to be <laughs> not it. Not our turn with Mason. Nobody wants it's Baker be, Mayfield. It's be the worst version of the people. Yeah. That want yeah they don't Baker want Mayfield. Mayfield. Why would they want Mason? Yeah. Nobody it's wants the worst version of yeah. who wants Baker Mayfield. <laughs> Nobody wants Baker Mayfield. Right. You think it's like, oh, but we'll take Mason Rudolph. Mason I mean, Rudolph. There's a whole line out there for him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Could job. you imagine Mason Rudolph as a backup on the on the Browns? That would be fun. Washington would do. It's something I, with his new I, teammates, I, Miles I, I Garrett. Right. Laugh out loud. Yeah. <laughs> that would be excellent. Yeah. So please. So, so what do they need? What, do, who, like what? Safety what? quarterback, D line. I, I I'd like to see. I like to see some depth on the D line. I would like to see a veteran running back as a backup. But a veteran wide receiver. I mean, we got all these young kids. Do you know what I mean? It's a packed wide receiver room. But who do you have there that's any kind of veteran to give any kind of leadership skills? To Isn't Jarvis Landry still out just, there? Co- he yeah, is av- yeah. he is available. I think that would be Not interesting. I think that would, would be an interesting. I, I, I would love a Jarvis Landry pickup. There's a couple I, wide receivers that are still out there. I was reading an article today. It would be interesting to pick one of them up. It just makes sense because somebody else is going to have to. Let's be honest. Somebody's got to go. You know what I mean? But you need somebody veteran to help pull these guys together and solidify this unit. Yeah. Yeah. The, really agreed. The entire offense is like age 26 or under. Yeah, everybody Good. is young. Good. And, and the entire look at the entire offense. I don't think you have one old person on that on that team mm-hmm. on that on that Good. side of the ball. Th- that that's that's good, and but it's also let's get a little maturity in there. Yeah, I would like I would I would like a Jarvis in that in that same room to whip them into shape. Yeah, I'm not the, the the youth does not scare me on on this team with Mike Tomlin at the helm. The youth does not scare me because Mike Tomlin will whoop you i don't if know you get out of line we've especially in that wide receiver room i saw some immaturity i would just think it would be nice to see somebody there to help kind of big brother those guys a we little need bit. a a another darius hayward bay that would be he was like yeah. the perfect no. dude yes he was perfect he was perfect. he was a perfect veteran that was yes. like a good teammate right i wouldn't that's mind a, that's seeing a veteran really I would not mind seeing a better. Uh, my vote is for Jarvis Landry if they can get him for the money. Jarvis yeah. Landry would be fine. He would be fine. Um, I Go have heard that. rumors that they're supposedly thinking of signing another um, outside linebacker. 
I don't know who's in the mix though. Yeah, that was. Um, I, I think they need. I think they need, they need somebody one. else. Um, they need some depth is 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 what I'm hearing. The yeah. depth I mean, behind you, the, the the depth behind um, High Smith and T.J. Watt is very not good. Yeah, right it's it's not it's, good. Been, it's poor. Um, also, uh, cornerback. Are we happy with the cornerbacks? I mean, you got Levi Wallace and. Cam Sutton is your is your main yeah. cornerback, so maybe the nice somebody. I'm less I'm less nervous about that than I am about the D line. The D line needs some work. Like the D line just needs to get some depth because Cam Hayward can't play forever. Cam Hayward can't play forever, so that's good for hopefully this uh, we all works out. Uh, but if you have a really good defensive line and really good linebackers, then it. It almost doesn't matter what your it kind of makes you, up you know, for your DBs. The yeah. cornerbacks aren't yeah, that good. It's true. So yeah. hopefully. I mean, you got the most feared pass rusher in the league, like sitting sitting there right out sitting there I mean, right outside. So who knows who knows what's gonna happen? You know, people, you know, they're surprise cuts. I mean, just just the, the other day. The Giants cut that cornerback Bradbury, who's who's good. Yeah. Uh, so so people like that will fall. Yeah. And, and I have we'll no see. idea. Who that um, is. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's, I did, yeah, he's, he's a cornerback that is not currently on the Steelers. That's, that's what I know about him. Right. And Should he be on the Steelers though? But I, I mean, Could who be. knows? Who knows? I mean, like, like, you know, remember Joe Hayden, like five years ago, just, just fell into their laps. You know, that's what yeah, they want. They wanted true. another that, Joe Lane. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe, uh, maybe they'll get the current Joe Hayden and maybe, maybe have I him be like a veteran. Something presence. definitive on Joe Hayden. This is like slowly breaking my heart. This is like a boyfriend that keeps coming back and dumping you over and over again, but then comes uh, over for dinner and then dumps you over and over again. Like all his Instagram posts about moving out of Pittsburgh, but then he's still here. And it, oh, it just, it's like slowly breaking my heart. I would not. I would honestly not mind seeing Joe Hayden come back in like a coaching role. Like I feel like he could just sit there and be like, "Look, boys, I've done this like a million times." Right. <laughs> just come back as no, just, like my I, personal I, support person. I'm really sad about losing him. Yeah. <laughs> well, they need to do something because last year he was like the heart and soul of that secondary. Yes. And he when, was the only part of that secondary other than Minka. And yeah. And when he was hurt and he didn't play, that secondary yeah. fell apart. So Collapse. they got to figure that out. Yeah, collapse. They got to figure something out. And I don't know why he wouldn't. I don't know. I don't know what the story is there, but why, why he's not just coming back on a one-year deal. I mean, something. Do something. He's just still sitting there. I mean, I'm honestly really hoping. Packing that and unpacking Alu- boxes. I'm really hoping we get a Lulu back. We get to it back. This Leo guy pans out. And like we have a really solid defensive line and then a good linebacking core. Now they've got Miles Jack back there. And like that front seven can just like really compensate for the fact that yeah. all we really got in the backfield is uh, Edmonds who can tackle kind of good and make a Fitzpatrick. Like yeah. other than that, like it's nothing. Well, the other huge question mark is Devin Bush. I, I, that's frightening. Until he shows me something, Terrifying. I lost all faith in Devin Bush. Yeah, here's a the problem. They, they can't afford to lose all faith in Devin Bush. I mean, no, they already, no we need him to get his, you know what, together. Like, they already oh. have lost faith because they didn't offer yeah. him that fifth year option. So, that's what I mean, but if he doesn't pan out, and I don't, I'm not looking. I mean, right now, but this is kind the, the, of a make or break it year for him. Like, if he's got it left in him at all, he's got to do it this year because he won't even get signed by somebody else next year. His career will be over. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's, he's got to perform this year. So, whether it's to hopefully agree. get the Steelers to keep him or some other team to sign him, he, he's got to perform. It's a huge, it's a huge year for him. I have it's, no it's, idea what he was doing last year. I, I think he last, doesn't know year, what he was doing it, last year. I, I think it's, it's, it was all you know related to his injury he either wasn't physically um get back or mentally he did not trust his body enough to yeah i don't know i don't know but um regardless of that this year all of those things are off the table you have to put up or shut up right now you're right that is it right this is the season there was an interview um there was an interview with kevin colbert and and he was asked about devin bush and he said it's like there was two different players 
the player it, it, before it the injury really and before is. the after injury. Yes. And it really is. But when you have the general manager saying that, that is damning. That is bad, really bad. bad. Bad, Because if he's saying that to the press, what's he saying to like other GMs on the phone? Do you know what I mean? It's, right, it's, right. It's really what, what are they and, saying? And what are they saying? It's a shame. Like and I can't imagine like a kid like him who had so much passion and so much talent and so much desire to then be in the situation he was in last year. Well, like you said, whether it's his mind or his body or a combination of both, it's got to be so frustrating. And and I feel terrible for him, but he, he's got to, he's got to come back and perform or he's just done. He's just done. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, that that's just the, that that's the hand he's been dealt. So hopefully I, I'm mm-hmm. praying if he puts up and he, he is the linebacker that they moved up a couple of spots to go draft. I'm over the moon and yeah. they, pick him, they, they, they bring him back and he's our linebacker for the next 10 years. Cool. Fine by me. But I just I do not have faith in the man anymore right now. So just just based on his body of work, like nothing against the man himself, but no. just based on his body of work. Huge, so. huge, huge question mark because yeah. that puts a big hole yeah. in that defense if he doesn't work out. It's a huge so. hole. I mean, it was a big part of the problem, you know, last season. It's a huge hole, and and it's just one that has to be addressed. And then with especially when we already have so many other like funky variables like to it and all over lose return and all those things it really just leaves a lot of question marks that are uncomfortable to it to it is another big question mark but huge huge it's huge yeah huge. Massive. i hope he's okay yeah 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 i i, I really want to see him back he was he was one of the top d linemen in the league Me too like when he was when he was playing the year before prior right. and like yeah, his his loss was felt like you felt them not be able to do the things they used to be able to do that um yeah. that uh, emotionally that the, and like physically on the field and as like a leader on the team do you know what i mean like it was it left like a void it really oh 100 percent. sometimes you yes. have somebody injured and they're still yeah. there and so they're you know still present and cheering people on but with his situation and all the tragedy he faced it, it just left such a void Oh yeah, so, I, so we'll see. Lots of lots of question marks. Uh, you know who's not a question mark though? Who I think is going to have the breakout year for the Steelers offensively? Pat Fryermuth. He's going to go off. He's going to probably be at least the number three tight end in the league this year, at the very minimum. I I think Pat Fryermuth is going to go off this year. I hope that would be very interesting. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And to have a um a good tight end be like a like a safety blanket for let's say the offense yeah. is struggling or something like that, because you you know you potentially have you either have a brand new quarterback or a or a rookie quarterback right. in there to have like a nice you know s- safety blanket that you, you could always throw to um, you got a guy you got a guy that got that's gonna get you seven yards a clip. Pat Frymouth. Pat Frymouth every time. There you go. I like it. He's gonna I get like you a it. tough seven every time. He may not he may not he may not be busting down like Travis Kelsey, but he's gonna get you a tough seven every time. Yeah. It's it's gonna be a fascinating training camp. I can't wait till it starts. Can't um, wait. I'm I'm going to try to be there as much as possible. Well, not as much as yeah. possible, but I'm going to. It's where it's, are they having training camp this year? Are they having it at St. Vincent's? It's coming back yeah. to St. Vincent. Thank yeah. goodness. Woo! It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, sit in that field and have bugs and bees yeah. bite you and stuff. It's, 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 <laughs> it's wonderful. It is. It, it's it's a really cool atmosphere because it's in yeah, literally like in the middle of nowhere. My, yeah. My, it's me like and my bro- me and my brother, my dad went there one year and my brother literally like stuck a football out as like random players were walking by. I'm like, please sign my ball in like his like three year old voice. And it was just Aww. like, and, and like random, like I, I forget he's on the ball, but like random Steelers yeah. just like, yeah 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 it's so amazing like- <laughs> you get to talk to the team you get to yeah, yeah. you know yeah. I, I i forget his name it's a it great like, experience it was like it was one of the backup uh, offensive linemen. i think it's hawkins or something like that yeah we just had a lovely conversation and, and it's like oh and that was also like that was also the year like like 
practice was over and it's like, and oh, by the way, you know, Ryan Shazier just shows up, you know, after his injury and you know, oh, you know, so, nobody uh, was sure whether, whether he could walk or not. He just shows up and starts talking to people like, oh, oh my God, this is amazing. I would love to talk to that man. It's, um, it's, it's a really cool um, atmosphere. We'll see yeah. you know, how it is. We'll see what we, whether we could be near the, the players or not and stuff, but it's, it's, it's just really cool. It's really cool. It's like, yeah. it's like feel the dreams. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And Joe, me and the wife are planning on coming out for a game. So I'll let you know when we. Oh, please let me. I would love to get together. Yes. Yeah. So we're we're definitely getting together. All right, guys. See, we don't need. You're right. This is the A team. We got. Wait, this is the this is the pot. This is the Steelers podcast all star game right here. This is we got we got the all stars. The all pro team. There you go. This is the Pro Bowl. This is the Pro Bowl of 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 Steelers podcast. All right, guys. No, this this was Bye, this guys. was a lot of fun. It was right. fun. Thank you. All right. Bye, we'll see you guys. Bye. Bye.